What's going on guys? It's Brandon and you're watching Watching Unwind. If you're just getting into Rolex or watch collecting or if you are an enthusiast already but you haven't ha uh, had a chance to pick up your first Rolex, you just wanted something very clean, very timeless, that's good for all around or any occasion, I would probably tell you to pick up this. This is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual. This is in 41 millimeters. You can get this in 36 as well. This is one of the fun dial colors, but they do come in other dial colors. But this is a watch you could have for your whole lifetime. You could go swimming with it. You could wear it up, wear it down. This looks good with jeans and a t-shirt. It would also look good if someone's having a wedding. I really don't think you could go wrong with this watch. This would be my number one pick. The problem with that though, is that this is the Rolex Datejust. Another very, very wearable watch. This one's kind of tricked out. You could get it in stainless steel with a smooth bezel. It would look a lot closer to this. This one is a uh, pretty blingy. It's as balling as you can go on a Datejust because we have the two-tone uh, steel and yellow gold fluted bezel champagne dial with the diamond indices. Um, so it's a little flashy, obviously, but this is also a super wearable and versatile watch. You could also take this watch in the pool. You could dress this watch up. I like look, uh, the look of like a fancier watch, even with just, you know, jeans and a t-shirt. I think it looks good. And this watch toes that line between dress watch and um, casual watch or sports watch really well. The both technically a sports watch, but this would might be my number one pick if you just wanted a uh, very versatile Rolex or like a one watch collection, something to pass down. So what do you do, guys, if you have your choice between both of these watches? They are extremely close, but they're different at the same time. Obviously, this isn't the best comparison because this one is the two-tone with the diamond, so you're getting a little bit different look there. But still, both these watches are extremely similar. I want you guys to let me know in the comments what you think, what you would pick between these two watches, but I'm gonna kinda tell you my rationale on if you're trying to choose what you should go with. If we're talking about price, you're gonna have to go to the Oyster Perpetual. This is Rolex entry level watch. It's $6,000. The green one, if you can find it, is market price 6,000. I mean, uh, retail price 6,000, but it has a market price of about 15,000. At one point it was 22,000. That's kind of where it peaked out. Right now it's sitting at about 15. You guys know it's like the stock market. So this is, is if you can get it and if you're price conscious, that's the way to go. The date just is gonna cost a little bit more because you're paying for the extra complication. The date wheel, this one, it's all tricked out. This one's 15 and a half thousand. And uh, this is a big statement watch, but don't get me wrong, guys. This is a very, very wearable watch. You could wear this watch every single day. You don't have to take it off. When you hit the pool and you're just out at a boat, you don't have to dress this one up. You can wear it casual, and it really does the job. But um, this one costs a lot, lot more than the OP. So if you're trying to spend a little bit extra, you could go towards the date just. And why might you want to do that? Well, you have the option to get the Jubilee bracelet. That option isn't even there with the OP. It always comes on the Oyster, which I do think is the most comfortable bracelet out there, period. But if this bracelet's like a 10, this is a 9.9. .9. This bracelet is so super comfortable. I mean, I will give it the 10. They are kind of neck and neck. It comes down to preference, but they do feel different on wrist, but it's not like a bad difference. They're just both really good bracelets. Why would you want to pick this? Because it has the date complication. I never thought that a time only watch would bother me. And it doesn't 
bother me because I love this watch. It's my favorite watch that I own and I like how cl clean and symmetrical that dial looks. But I do find myself looking for the date wheel when it's not there. So if this was truly going to be like an all around watch, I would think you might want the date wheel on it. So you might want to get something like the Datejust. It has the Cyclops. I like the Cyclops a lot. I know some people have mixed feelings on it, but when it's actually on wrist, it is cool. It does help you see that date wheel kind of instantly. Um, I wouldn't say it's as symmetrical as the OP dial, but it's not a bad look. But if you wanna go for something clean, if you already have a watch with the date on it, then go for the OP. Let me get that camera shot, boom. Because uh, the OP is just so clean, um, it's, it's timeless. I mean, it's simplicity done right. It's such a simple watch. Every single Rolex watch on the bottom says Oyster Perpetual on the dial, even the Daytona. It's the foundation that all these other Rolex watchers are built upon. A nice in-house time-only movement. If Rolex can build these more fancier movements, then they can definitely build the time only. So it is kind of cool to have the simplest form done right. That's why I really like the OP um, and why I picked out an OP over a date just is because I like the simplicity of it. But either way, guys, you can't go wrong. Um, both these watches, we're exactly the same as you can see they're basically the same size these are both the 41 millimeter model you could get the 36 if you would like and they go smaller than that 34 32 millimeters i believe and there might be some female sizes slightly smaller than that on these watches but it's pretty versatile um let me try to think what else guys what really sets these watches apart one of my viewers commented, um, and I totally agree with this, that the Datejust is Rolex's bespoke piece. You want two-tone, you can do it. Do you want rose gold, yellow gold, white gold? What do you want for a dial? Do you want diamond indices? Do you want Roman numeros? Do you just want, you know, indice lines? How exactly do you want your watch? You can basically order it that way for the date just and um, I just think that's really cool because if you are getting one watch and this is like for a one watch collection you want it to be exactly like how you want it and you can definitely have it that way with the date just um, the availability on these isn't great guys um, it's hard to get a date just now there are you know wait lists for date just Sometimes if you're lucky, you can't order it and then it might come in in a couple months to maybe a year, but you usually have to pay up front for that. But I'm a fan of both of these watches. Um, I would wear either of these watches every day. This watch I will wear every day. Uh, this is my buddy's watch that I'm borrowing. I actually got it for him as a gift because he's getting married and I still got it with me right now. Let me know what you guys think between these two watches. Who wins, the OP or the Datejust for the most versatile Rolex? Someone's gonna comment a Submariner, but I think that these are a little more versatile than a Submariner. Don't hate me for that one, just because they don't have a sports bezel and they do look a little bit dressier than the Submariner, yet they still have the 100 meters of water resistance. When I go in the ocean, I'm snorkeling. I don't go too deep. I might dive under three, four feet. I don't, I'm not gonna be close to uh, the 100 foot, and I definitely don't need to go 300 foot down. So that's why I picked these over kind of the Submariner for versatility, but you might not agree with that. Let me know. I like dialogue, so I definitely want to hear from you guys. And do me a solid. Hit that subscription button. Hit the thumbs up. It really, really helps, guys. I'll catch you on the next one.